Excuse me, I gotta get my glove on. I will survive. No matter how many joints I smoke, I know I've got a mine. Now, I, uh, I said something about feeling powerless as a child. I don't think that's exactly true. I would say I feel powerless as I felt as a child. Powerless as I, I, I felt, and I didn't know. Um, and this is just a theory. It's, you know, it's very hard to take other people's theories of their personal development on board. So I appreciate the patience of the listener. Um, but if it's helpful to me, it might be helpful to someone else. And that's all I can go on. That's my only qualification. I'm shooting in the dark just like everyone else. <clears throat> you know? So, uh... <sighs> I don't think that it necessarily follows that I felt, um, or learned to experience what it's like to have felt without feeling, uh, as powerless as I was as a child. Um, I don't read total and unmitigated evil in that. Not, I wouldn't say that I would want to get rid of my life, you know? I wouldn't want to excoriate my life away with all the pain I think I endured. But that a beautiful life, like a beautiful body, became, learned to accommodate pain. And to learn to accommodate it means certain things to certain people. We could start with that. That helps mitigate a little bit. Because I want to take the value of the pain. I don't want to be overwhelmed by it. Tragic, though I think it needs to be understood to be in various perspectives. That tragedy is there to help us understand as a cue. To understand the good. How good the good was. Um, it can help us understand what there is to be learned at least from what we might call tragic, even if it wasn't necessarily as tragic as we call it. In fact, it would become less tragic the more we look at it. Maybe it becomes less tragic. Maybe we could be convinced it was never tragic at all. I don't know. I'm shooting in the dark. I've met people who thought it was uh, within their power to very strongly suggest that nothing painful had ever happened to anyone, and it was all just an illusion. That's what I call a nice idea. <laughs> and it's an idea that probably not without some psychological weight for some people. But it's a very different way than the way that I'm suggesting here, because it doesn't work in the long haul. We convince ourselves of many things in the cycle of our lives. And many people will probably convince us of certain things, and they may or may not be true. Because as social people, we like to be convinced in things from time to time. We let ourselves be convinced in things. Because it helps us be convinced in other things we have convinced ourselves in, or want to be convinced in. Is there something terribly evil about what we do with convincing? <laughs> Maybe. But I'm not a man who's, who says that room for growth, while an ample and uh, charitable euphemism, um, is, is, packs the same clout, or should take power away from his twin god, that uh, things can happen to people that are too, quite too much for their minds to understand. And it's certainly true that as a child, very little of what was going on around me is something that I would look back and think that I should have understood. And I, I honestly believe that my lack of... I suffered from my lack of understanding. <clears throat> my mind seemed to demand a little more explanation. My emotional body, in as much as it has a memory of its own, just feels uh, neglected uh, to the point that it, was, it would almost seemed painful and shocking, surprising well into my twenties, when a woman for the first time took an interest in my well-being. Right? Sexually motivated though it was, she was just a nice woman, took an interest in my, 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 my well-being. She just said, have a good rest. I was at college and I wanted to take a nap, and she said, I hope you have a nice nap. And no one had ever talked to me that way before, and I was about 24, 25 years old. No one had ever talked to me that way. A woman had never talked to me that way. Um, and even as I'm saying this now, I, it comes over me fresh. 
It's not a bad feeling, it's just the absence of something. And it makes you feel lonely. Really, really lonely. Because in many other ways, it, I think the thought of being around other people I find a little bit shocking. I find people kind of jolting. And I'm very attuned to when they're being nice to me and when they're not. And when they're... People talk with certain frames. We talk to people in certain frameworks. Maybe they address you with a certain, in a certain way here. Maybe they address you differently here. And what will happen, if you're an intelligent person, you'll notice that the integrity of things that they say, or that you can take to mean from what they're saying, change. It may not be as true in this situation. And when you consult all the voices that this person gives you, <laughs> it may be that you will remain a little bit confused in different areas as to how much you can trust them about what they're telling you, and as opposed to what they're showing you. Right? Because they, you know, in, in this sense, maybe that's not so true, is it? What if someone says they love you, for instance, or someone tells a child they love them, and then spends years of their life yelling with another adult to the point that he and his siblings have to lock themselves in the bedroom regularly, and spends the better part of his uh, early adolescent life crying himself to sleep with loneliness and sadness that his home became loveless and had no one to talk to. But I remember that. And my emotional body remembers that. So I know that there are almost like cavities in me that have never been filled. Like cups that have never been filled. And I'm also very aware that I've spent most of my life watching other people who have had similar effects on their minds, looking to fill their cups. But they can never get them filled. Nature won't even let it. Even if cult psychology is a matter of someone trying the best they can, and the fact that nature won't let us fill our cups with anything but that warmth and consideration which we deeply, biologically and spiritually need from a mother and a father. And so, in so much as I'm always calling people psychopaths, I am uh, horrified that I myself have gotten used to a world where people don't honor this fact that a lot of what people need will never come in any other way but from their mother and father. And the more that anyone notices this, notices this, 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 um, I think the more they might be inclined to entertain my idea of worshipping your ancestors, finding any way you can, and it'd be interesting to note the ways that I have found, for instance, to allow your heart <laughs> and your emotional body to speak, especially if very few people have ever actually taken the time to speak to you. So I may not have always felt utterly powerless, because I wouldn't have been able to report that feeling in a way that I could remember. I couldn't tell the history to my mind in that way. Kids don't really need to think about doing much, that we probably think about a lot more when we're bigger. Uh, that much is true, but that doesn't mean that they're not fully occupied all of the time. In fact, they don't even know how occupied they are. And people around them when may feign surprise. They didn't know why Julie all of a sudden is having an angry period, or why Todd suddenly pierced his scrotum at the age of 13. They may not know that, but what we know is that a lot has been going on that they couldn't say, and suffered maybe, more or less, I would say on the high on the more side, from the fact that people around them never managed to peer into that world. Didn't say the right words, didn't treat them the right way, didn't show that curiosity and interest. They weren't looking for anything there. As far as they're concerned, they looked at them, they didn't see all that stuff, they didn't see a myth about that stuff, a story about that stuff, anything in the science books about that stuff, nothing in their family's religion, their profession, nothing in all the heartfelt, sentimental, you know, Stroke the back, love you, do this, be there for you. Money, power, love, connection, everything wonderful in their lives, yet may not speak. There's actually a cold mist. I was followed by a mist the other day when I was here. Sorry, when I was out on the coast. Like a cloud came right toward me. Uh, there's a mist coming up on the land. Uh, fascinating. I'm just going to get the high ground here. It's probably perfectly natural, but I, I like to read demonological things, into the, you know, just to give them their due so I can... We can all give each other their due. 
like Satan's minions need their due. They're making some due, maybe. I'll write a poem once. Satan's minions made the due. I'm just glad that today I took a poo. You can see I'm a very well-trained poet. Now, a uh, pileated woodpecker just flashed me his orange wings right through this beautiful forest. I feel that's moments like that that my heart rings. And now dogs have started up in the distance. They don't like me being happy, these demons. Well, now I'm starting to be entertained, though. This is a theater of the biblically grotesque, this particular section of land. It's amazing. I don't know why I'm walking this way. I just thought the woodpecker was attractive. And this forest is quite lovely. I saw some indigent people roaming around here the other day. Move along, my land. I'm quite selfish. It's a bad trade of mine. But when I want to do some work somewhere, it, it better offer me a little more isolation than my, my primary location. It's just two, two days in a row I've come out here and used this as a secondary ceremonial ground. I get to talking like this and it's I'm already in my own space, you know. People can come and go and I'll stay in my own space or I'll walk around or I'll move around, but my mind now is basically turned on. <clears throat> and I, my mind's actually, in a sense, in an athletic mode, you might say. You know, that point if you're jogging and it just becomes on an automatic. My mind is now at a higher gear. It happens usually two or three hours into my walkabout. Something one way or another. I'm trying to pay more attention to things. And the more I pay attention, always the better. But so many things on my mind. Talking about my childhood kind of takes it out of me. But uh, I was feeling depressed earlier. Uh, and when I say that, it means that it's lightened a bit. The eagle's crying now. This uh, is one guy, talk, I don't know if he worked in the military or whatever it was, he said, you know, get out of that fear of vibration and just do what you need to do and you'll automatically do what you need to do and it'll be as good as, as, good as you ever hoped you could do. And I thought that was really lovely and uh, I don't know if he put it quite as eloquent as I did. <laughs> Actually, probably a lot more clear than I did, but it, was, it, was, uh, it made an impression on me. Uh, because I, I've never been able to really live my life any way but exactly the way I want to. If I don't want to go somewhere, I won't go there. If I don't like a place, I don't like a place. If there's things I don't like a place, there's things I don't like about a place. I love, throughout the winter, getting to know these places. I've done a lot of exploring in this year. and A lot of different places have come to me and different things to me. And as I continue my walk, I'll head down to the ocean to see my pentacle. And uh, we'll see if I can... I can figure out what the hell I'm doing here. Um, that I felt powerless or was powerless as a child is significant to me. Um, it's significant in that I've imagined for my brain or that of mankind, if you like, um, the capacity to be like a child, to have things which are dead come back to life, even parts of our own function. Has anyone ever had emotions that came back to life? I know I have. I could go, I don't want to elaborate on it because it just takes me into such a well-worn part of my life that I could just go on and on and, and I lose all sense of whether or not the audience has been completely exhausted of all the patience, considerable patience they've already brought to bear upon listening to one of my videos. I'm just going to leave it at that. I, I just, I think it really quite, uh, with all the talking to one side, it just helped to admit that sense of powerlessness as a child or feeling powerless as a child or feeling powerless as I may have felt as a child if anyone had even asked me how it felt. Um, and worse than that, feeling, I should say, powerless as I got older, feeling powerless quite a bit, and feeling depressed quite a bit. And I think this warlock was right about powerlessness and depression. Um, it's a big hold that thought moment for me.